You know, it's just a really popular ice fishing opportunity. I mean, it attracts a lot of attention. And what's interesting is, as a general rule of thumb on these river locations, it seems like the first anglers on a spot score, and then the fishing gets tougher, you know, as these holes or, or locations get fished out. That's kind of the name of the game on these rivers, is just trying to be one of the first ones on some of these spots. Oh, that's a good fish. There's a nice one. Right back down to the bottom. Sure, one of the powerful freshwater fish that swims right there. Oh yeah, here we go. We are hooked up. Oh, I never get tired of this. These fish just freight traded. Oh my. Wow. The whole thing, big one. That is what we're talking about tonight, a cool looking fish. Jason Mitchell Outdoors is brought to you by Shields, Vexilar, Clam, K Drill, Ice Armor by Clam, Crestliner, North Dakota Tourism. Clam Pro Tackle, Bismarck Motor Company, Travel Manitoba, and Jason Mitchell Elite Series Fishing Rods. Dude, it's nuts. This hole is on fire. So today we're out here on Lake on Alaska, which is one of the many backwaters on the Mississippi River. Just thinking here about how many spots we have to fish within 30 miles of La Crosse. I think there's too many to even count. The river is so diverse and there's so many different places you can fish. Um, you can be fishing as in shallow as three foot of water. You can be out in 26 plus feet catching panfish and walleye through the ice. We're just getting started here. We're down here in La Crosse, Wisconsin this week. Tell you what, we're already catching fish, but we're with the University of Wisconsin La Crosse fishing team. And I tell you what, across the nation, you know, these College and high school fishing teams are pretty exciting. It's encouraging fishing. I think it's an awesome opportunity for young people. Boy, if it would have been around when I was a kid, I might have stayed in school. Oh, here comes one. Here we go. Oh yeah, there's a nice one. All right, you know, the cool thing about this out here is you can come out here and catch jumbo perch, you can catch crappies, you can catch big bluegills, walleyes. Really a cool fishing opportunity. We have 27 anglers as of right now, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we had a couple of females just join the team uh, a couple weeks ago here. We mainly do the competitive bass fishing, but we welcome every type of fisherman. We have fly fishermen, ice fishermen. We're a rec sport, so we're, you know, we run our own team basically. We manage ourselves and we try to teach people about uh, fishing and then also too just like building life skills that will help in the industry or with anybody's future career going forward. The biggest thing we like to emphasize here is always improving at everything we're doing. Um, we do a lot of volunteering, community service, and the fishing stuff too is always nice. We really want people to be building life skills and getting better as people too, not just the fishing side of things. You know, it was just kind of a cool story because Gage reached out to me here a while back and you know, I just wanted to know if we could just stop by and talk to the 
fishing club and you know, I just think these college and high school fishing clubs are just such a cool opportunity. I thought, well, better yet, why don't we just come down and fish with you? I, you know, I love to see you know, young anglers that have that passion, that you know, have that uh, desire to learn more about fishing. And, you know, and it, and it kind of brings me back to, I remember being in college and in high school and you know, looking back, you know, I fished way too much. In fact, I didn't even graduate college, I was fishing so much. Boy, I tell you what, if, you know, looking back, I mean, if there could have been an opportunity in high school or college to, you know, to fish in a, in kind of an organized club, you know, where there's competition and stuff, I would have been all over. I mean, it would have been just an awesome opportunity. So I love to see it. So we've been going like slow and steady so far. Morning bites typically pretty slow, but as the day uh, day progresses, the bigger ones really start to bite. And we're about 12 o'clock here and starting to get some bigger bites. We've heard a lot about these, you know, backwater fishing opportunities off the river. And I've fished further north up by Elma and. You know, and there's just so much variety. There's just so many different types of spots. You know, typically, you know, you're obviously off the river where there's safe ice. And, you know, a lot of the program is just finding these troughs or holes or bowls that are just a little bit deeper. And so a lot of the water around us is only three feet of water. But there's just a little bit of a bowl, a little bit of a slot where there's six, seven feet of water. There's some weeds in the bottom of it. And, you know, and that's where these fish are. Jason Mitchell Outdoors is brought to you by these industry leaders. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, what's my favorite series of hubs? The Clam C Series shelters work best for us. Hey, what's our favorite ice sub shelter? The X Series from Clam Outdoors. Yeah. Choose the hub shelter that's right for you at Clam Outdoors. Pursue the ice. A Vexilar is responsible for more fish being caught than any other piece of equipment you could buy. You know what, fishing lures and gadgets have come and gone over the last 60 years, but Vexilar's mission statement has been true, helping anglers catch more fish. Vexilar is the gold standard in sonar performance and reliability in flasher sonar technology. Your ice fishing adventure begins and ends with a Vexilar by your side. Happy 60th Vexilar! Introducing the Rise Float Suit with Motion Float Technology. Breathable, waterproof, secure, and all the features that make the difference. Waterproof cell phone pocket, rapid drain system, and maximum flexibility. Fish with security in the Rise Float Suit from Ice Armor by Clam. Rise above. Clam Outdoors. Pursue the ice. Most of these bluegills have been coming through right off the bottom, maybe a foot, two feet off the bottom, but we've caught a few higher fish too. There we go. Oh yeah, this is a good one. There we go. Oh, look at that. That is a great bluegill. Look at that. This guy's such nice color on him. You know, I tell you what, if there's something about these Mississippi River fishing opportunities, just to describe it, it'd be diverse. There's just so many different things you can do out here. Just an awesome, awesome ice fishing opportunity. You know, so right away this morning, you know, what we noticed is this, you know, big and bold was better in the sense that just a small leech flutter spoon with just a couple of wax rooms, that was really effective, at least for sorting out the bigger fish. 
And then as the sun got high middle of the day, then, you know, we were scaling back towards, you know, just small tungsten and jigs. And we've caught fish on plastics, but, you know, get towards the middle of the day, you know, it seemed like we had to go back to live bait. And, you know, then as the day progressed, you know, and the sun got lower, you know, we saw some of those aggressive presentations shine. But that's a pretty common spectrum to go through where, when things are going good and fish are aggressive, you know, the small spoons, then gravitating towards the jigs and the soft plastics when the fish won't hit those and it gets tougher yet, going to the smaller jigs and just wax worm or, or live bait. You know, that's pretty typical with panfish, you know, just depending on where that sun's at and the mood of the fish. I would say the biggest issue around here is obviously pressure. There's a lot of areas that have good fish there's just so many people at them and early ice and late ice are really good around here but mid ice it gets challenging especially when you go to those same several community holes. Any day can be different and the big thing is try to explore and fish even those community holes a little bit differently but don't be afraid to go out and try new spots and uh, you know fail you know if you go out and don't catch anything but you're trying something new it's still better than not catching anything and trying the same old thing over and over again. We're just kind of bouncing around. We've got a kind of a grid of holes, just drill through this little trough here and we're just bouncing from hole to hole and kind of wear out your welcome and start catching small fish. You're marking fish that don't bite and some of you just need a change of scenery. A lot of times the first little bit of time at a hole is usually the best. I guess one of the, the biggest challenges is with, especially with the University of La Crosse, the bass fishing club, is that it's, we're self-funded. That means we have to go out and raise our own money to send these young men and women to these tournaments. The challenging part is, is getting out, getting everybody together, doing the fundraisers. So we have enough money to send these young men and women to these tournaments and give them the opportunity uh, to be able to fish at the next level. Especially this winter time, we're, we're going to be doing an ice fishing tournament out here on uh, Lake on Alaska. And the tournament is Saturday, February 1st. It's going to run from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's going to be a great event. We're going to cap it out at 75 individuals. So it's going to be a team of one. And it's only going to cost you 10 bucks. So everybody can come on down, have fun, enjoy, catch some fish, and, and uh, help out UW Lacrosse Fishing Club. It depends on the individual. I know some of us fish pretty much every day uh, after school. Others go out just on some weekends. It's totally up to the individual. Uh, in competitions, we've only done like three or four tournaments a year in the past because of funding. But uh, now that we're getting more involved in the community, doing more fundraisers and uh, getting some support from some bigger companies, we can afford to do more. So I think the plan is to fish 10 college tournaments next year between the three organizations. Even though we're in college, we do get quite a bit of time on the water and a lot of cool experiences out there. We get to go to some really cool lakes all across the country to, to compete. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Great fish. There. Get my wax room back, but yeah, just awesome fishing opportunity. Awesome bunch of kids. You know, it's awesome to see, you know, next generation coming up and developing that passion. I tell you what, you know, the more I travel and, you know, just the different things that I get to see, I can tell you our future's in good hands.